Second grade nines, we are in the last new lesson for unit three. We're on day six and we're going to talk about some more strategies for solving kind of more complex application questions by setting up an equation for them. I'm going to go through a couple examples. So the first one is just a warm up and this is again, we really want to practice and be sure that we're really comfortable with solving equations involving fractions. So I'm going to look at this equation. I have 1 half x plus 3 quarters equals x, and I'm going to maybe make that a 1x, just to kind of remind myself that I've got a coefficient there, minus 1 half. Now looking at my denominators, I know that my lowest common denominator is 4. So I'm going to go through and multiply each term here by the lowest common denominator. So I'm going to take that lowest common denominator of 4 and multiply each piece of my equation times 4. And then I can reduce and that will eliminate all of the fractions. So here when I'm doing my reducing, 4 over 2 reduces to 2. 4 over 4 reduces to 1. This one was just an over 1, so it doesn't reduce at all. And then 4 over 2 reduces to 2. I would very, very much encourage you to write out this next step. I've got a 2 here times 1x, because the 2 has been reduced on the bottom, plus a 1, that number that was outside, times 3, equals 4 times 1x, minus, make sure you watch your signs there, we've got 2 times 1. So this can get a little bit messy when you put in all those brackets and reduce everything. I find that writing out this other step just to like clear it out and clean it up really helps. So 2x plus 3 equals 4x minus 2. Now we are away and we're able to solve. So I'm going to get the variables to the left, 2x, and then subtracting 4x from both sides eliminates the 4x on the right. And then I've got a negative 2 here and subtracting 3 from both sides eliminates that 3 from the left hand side. We've got negative 2x equals negative 5 and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And remember I'm not going to divide and put it as a decimal unless it's a word problem. So I'll just change negative over negative would be positive 5 over 2. The next example, we have an application type question. So again, we've got um, some measurement with our um, perimeter and we've got two different shapes. So the square has a side length of 3K and the equilateral triangle has a side length of 2K plus 1. And it says that they have the same perimeter. So the perimeter of the square and the perimeter of the triangle are going to be equal. So we know that the perimeter of the square is 4 times 3k because it's got four sides that are all 3k and the perimeter of the triangle is 3 times 2k plus 1. But it says that this perimeter equals this perimeter. So that's going to be my equation. So I know that 4 times 3k equals 3 times 2k plus 1 and I'm going to go through and solve. Make sure that you're careful when you're multiplying those monomials in. So on the left I get 12k, on the right I get 6k plus 3, so not just plus 1, and now I'm going to get variables to the left. So I get 12k minus 6k equals 3, 12k minus 6k is 6k equals 3 and then divide both sides by 6. k equals, now this is a word problem. So here I'm going to make this 0 0.5. Um, it doesn't say centimeters or meters, so it's just 0 0.5 units. Okay, so instead of doing 1 half, if it's a word problem, I would go into decimals. So that's not the end. k equals 0 0.5 is not the answer to the question because we have to look at what it is asking. It says what are the dimensions of each figure. 
So we're going to go back and the square 3k, if k is 0 0.5, 3 times 0 0.5 is 1.5, and the triangle is 2k plus 1, so 2 times 0 0.5 plus 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 units. And because it's a word problem, we have to answer with a therefore statement. So I would say therefore, the square has side length um, 1.5 units and the triangle uh, length two units. If this said centimeters or meters or whatever the case may be, you would use those units. So again, things to remember. Draw yourself a diagram, label things, all of these you're going to come up with an equation. You cannot just kind of guess and check your way to the answer and get full marks here. And setting up an equation and using algebra is what this is testing in this unit. Make sure you answer what the question's asking. Not k equals 0 0.5, you have to go and find the units, and then lastly, writing your therefore statement. Last example for this day and for the unit. Um, this is a kind of tricky word problem, and we're gonna kind of talk our way through it. Um, it says, it takes Ryan two hours to mow the lawn and water the garden, and it takes Maria three hours to do the same job. How long would it take them if they worked together? So um, just kind of thinking about kind of conceptually what this is going to be asking us. I'm going to just kind of put something in words and hopefully this will make sense. So I'm going to see that the fraction done by Ryan, what fraction of the work done by Ryan, plus the fraction done by Maria, that would equal the total, right? So maybe it's one quarter and three quarters, or four tenths and six tenths, whatever the things are, what would it have to add up to? So we don't know what the fractions are, but we know that whatever fraction this guy did and whatever fraction this guy did, they would have to add up to one. So they have to equal one because the two parts equal the total amount of the job. So the total job is like 10 tenths or six sixths, whatever it is. So then we want to say, how much of the work would Ryan do and how much of the work would Maria do? Okay. So here, I'm going to say X is how long it takes to do all of the work. So X is the amount of time it takes to do all of the work when they're working together. Now, Ryan normally takes two hours and Maria usually takes three hours if they're working by themselves. Okay. So how much of the work they do is going to be the total amount of time divided by how much of the time it would take them to do it themselves. So we know that normally the, so let's write this out for Ryan. So we're going to say that X over two, this is the total amount of time And then this is the time to do it himself. Okay. 
So this gives us a fraction because if he was doing all of the work himself, the total time would be two because Maria would be doing none, okay? So it would be two hours divided by the two hours. That would be do him doing 100% of the work. And for Maria, we're going to say that she's going to do X over three, which again is the total time um, that they take together divided by how much time she would take to do the work herself. Okay. So, and again, if she worked, it would take her a total of three hours if uh, Ryan wasn't helping at all. So here we've got the fraction of work that Ryan will do and the fraction of work that Maria will do. So we can write an equation, x over 2 plus x over 3 equals 1. So here we got, we've got a way of figuring out what the total amount of time is. So it's how much of the work gets done by Ryan plus how much gets done by Maria. That has to equal 1. Now we have an equation that we can solve. So I'm going to take this equation and multiply by the lowest common denominator, which is 6. So I'm going to multiply each piece of this by that 6. And then we'll look at the reducing. So here, 6 over 2 reduces to 3. 6 over 3 reduces to 2. And there we didn't have anything to reduce. So we've got... 3x plus 2x equals 6, 5x equals 6, and then we'll divide by 5. And because this is a word problem, we're going to say 1.2, and this is in hours because it's the amount of time. So here, we know that it would be shorter, right? We know that if Ryan takes two hours and Maria takes three hours, if they work together, it's going to be less than that for sure, but not quite half. If they both took two hours, then they could each do half and half and finish it in one hour. But Maria takes a bit longer, so they can finish it in 1.2 hours. And making sure we write a therefore statement with our units. So therefore, uh, working together they would take 1.2 hours. So they're going to take less time if they work together and we can figure that out by figuring the fraction of work that each person would complete and making sure that those two fractions have to add up to one. You could do a check also. You could put a 1.2 into your calculator. I'll maybe show that step here. So if I did 1.2 divided by 2 plus 1.2 divided by 3, I end up with a 1. So that's good. 1.2 over 2 plus 1.2 over 3 ends up equaling 1. But again, of course, you do have to show the work of solving the equation for all of these problems. That is it for Unit 3. Um, there is a Day 7, which is some review, but there's not a new video lesson for that. And then after that, we're going to be moving on to some graphing and linear relationships in Unit 4.